<laughs> so, um, and now for something in English. <laughs> and um, yeah, so welcome to another Dev Play episode, this one in English. Um, we're here um, in uh, Los Angeles in Santa Monica and we just met some people, uh, some by accident and some because we planned to meet them, uh, which is uh, uh, Thomas. Maybe you want to say who you are, what you're doing here? Uh, so I'm Thomas Brown and I am one of the directors and lead programmers of Burning Arrow and we're making the other 99 which has been published by Deck 13 so yeah that's that's our connection so um, yeah we're working together on the other 99 like you doing the cool development and we try uh, that people actually see and notice it and and then buy it in the end and um, but we just stumbled across each other when we were at E3 and said ah we think we know each other because yeah you've been working at Deck 13 in the past um, that's not a question because I know you've <laughs> been there but um, yeah 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 hi I'm Martin I worked at Deck 13 a couple of years ago and then I went to Crytek and to Roxy and now I'm here uh, in Santa Monica working for Naughty Dog so that's the connection here so you're working at the coolest studio of us three <laughs> and um, the cool thing is you can go to the beach after work right I can yes that's true uh, some people go serving and lunch break though yeah <laughs> Okay, no, that's not, no, that <laughs> but I mean, you, you live uh, at Cornwall, which is also at the beach, so maybe you also go surfing at lunch breaks, you do that? We could, is that a thing in Cornwall? It, we, we could do, it's, it's a lot colder than it is here, I think it would, <laughs> I think it would be a bit more of a gamble. <laughs> We'd have to put on wetsuits and oh, just <laughs> take far, far longer than, than I think it would for you guys. Okay, we're in Frankfurt and we never go surfing uh, in our lunch breaks. But we go to the mine and we can at least have, so we see some water, okay? So <laughs> at least that's something we can do. <laughs> so maybe you tell us a little bit about the game, uh, The Other 99, because uh, we were showcasing it a bit at the show and it was, I think, the first time that uh, other people could really see and play it or more or less the first time so what is it about is it also about sunshine and the beach it's about the beach right yeah. <laughs> there is a a beach at the moment um, so the other 99 is basically a first person survival game um, and you as a person wake up with no idea how you got onto this island and all you have beside you is a note that reads the only way off the island is through the other 99. From here you have to work out how you would try and survive in this situation. You know, are you going to take up the challenge, try and kill all 99 people or are you going to try and avoid conflict and try and find out the in-depth story and work out who got who put you here, how you got here, whether or not you can save other people. So that's, that's the other 99 in a nutshell. And you have some like harsh climate in there so it's like like uh, uh, Scottish Hunger Games then? Yeah. So it's, um, <laughs> I just came up with this, yeah. we didn't plan this. Like, I don't know, maybe it's totally bad to say that. <laughs> so we've, uh, we call it the British Battle Royale game. Um, it's set in the Outer Hebrides, so right at the top of Scotland where it's miserable 24-7, 365 days a year. I'm going gonna to get, gonna get in trouble from, from Scot Scotland now, for, um, but yeah, so it's just miserable. Well, that's how we think it's in England all the time. So <laughs> Yeah, apart, apart from down in Cornwall, it's just sunny all the time. It's just a tiny little bit of England that's always sunny. But um, yeah, it's just really miserable and it's just a really inhospitable place where you're going to have to fight for survival against the island itself and everyone else who's trying to kill you. And so you did a lot of world building there with the Unreal Engine and you created lots of lots of assets there to make this feel really something different, not like the tropical island, that's it, but you're doing like a very special uh, like, like 3D environment there, right? Yeah, so we've got um, a really big island. It's, uh, we've got a mixture of areas, we've got some open areas, we've also got some sort of forest areas. Um, they obviously, if anyone who knows the Hebrides will say there's no trees in the Hebrides, why are there trees? Um, it's all linked to the story, which, you know, can't say too much about, but there, there's a reason for them being there. And it's, you know, it just makes it feel a lot better. You get to play with how you would take out enemies or how you're going to take out for the island, you know. Are you going to sneak through the bushes or are you going to just run across open fields and try risking <laughs> whether people see you or not? So it really sounds like you put a lot of thought into that and um, I mean uh, uh, you're also a 3D artist uh, and um, so you can maybe feel how that is creating something according to a, I don't know, a plan, a story, something. So what's, what's your approach of, 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 of getting there, of, of getting closer? What, what do you think? Yeah, so usually I mean the approach is just have this idea in your mind, then you go big shapes, big parts of the level and then 
and it more into detail after that. Like, uh, so but it's a lot of work, though. Yeah, I mean, I can totally feel that. I've just recently worked on a personal project, Unreal Four as well, uh, like landscape scene. So, and it's, it's just you really underestimate how many details or assets you actually need to make. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so you end up working on two evenings just on one grass leaf thing. So it's like it never ends, but uh, yeah, it's still going. It's a lot of fun, and um, yeah, it's a really good, good thing to do. Yeah, and you, you also start with like building boxes to like define shapes and stuff or are you uh, uh, like just putting it in and rearranging or, or what's your what's your way of, of going at that yeah I would really start really simple like the big shapes like when I want to build a castle in distance then it's like not like super detailed everything of course it's more like really boxes and then try to make the silhouette look nice and uh, so I would go in and then when I'm happy with it I would go in and make more details like act flag, flag um, like cloth object whatever like like smaller details so you get from the big to the smaller like and try to make the whole scene instead of finishing one corner you just go in and make everything slightly more detailed so step by step and 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 if you do this i mean now speaking of the company you work with right now naughty dog um how many people i mean that's an official information i hope how many people are working on on the game maybe you can even say like on the 3d stuff of the game roundabout yeah so i think i'd rock um, at night we're around 250 people at the moment uh um, so the art team, it's, I mean, including everyone, like, uh, concept and character, I would say it's like 60 people probably, uh, but we do have a lot of outsourcers too, um, so it's, it's a big production, yeah, it's a lot of people working on the game, yeah. So, and we know how this looks when we look at Uncharted, how a game looks when it's really detailed in all the corners, so how many people do you have uh, working on your landscape then? Well, our, our department is currently made up of, I think it's three people. Um, we've got, we were actually quite lucky. We, um, we had some help from Microsoft with their Green Shoots program, and that helped us bring in a specialist environment artist and uh, another artist who's just doing props. We already had uh, one of the guy, four founders, he was a specialist character artist, so we've been quite lucky that he can now focus on character art, and we have two guys who are just working on the environment and making it, you know, really special. Yeah. <laughs> and I think this really interesting time in games development, we have games like Naughty Dog games where you say wow this looks cool and we have games from uh, teams like your team and people say wow this looks cool you know it's not like they say yeah okay but that's like crappy three people game and this is wow the big cool thing but they say this looks cool I want to play this and this looks cool I want to play this I mean it's maybe more people who know one of those games and want to play them but it's not like when they see the other game they say oh no it's not for me I don't like it and I think that it's a really interesting time so you can do stuff with a small team and also like you said working on a private project just 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 thinking of stuff in the evening shaping out stuff it doesn't look like like a mon one man show cannot do something cool it's, isn't that like very very exciting yeah. i mean it's, it, unreal engine that we're using for the other 99 has really it made it possible for us to make such a really beautiful game sort of instantaneously we didn't have to make our own graphic shaders or do any any real hard work to you know make it run well or make it you know pretty it just does it out of the box and that makes it a lot easier for us so an Unreal Engine is that like okay then it's then it's not a not a hard task because the engine does it all for you or is it a bit different? What, what do you think? Well, I think I mean to make it look good is one thing, but make it play good and work it's the other thing. Um, so I think a good part of Unreal or Unity, if you will, it's they have like a big uh, store where you can buy assets. Like you don't need to make every single thing. You don't need to make every little rock by yourself anymore. So you can just go and just get a nice looking set and just work from that. So that works pretty well. So you can get really good progress really fast. But as soon as you go into more detailed, uh, more unique styles, then it's getting harder and harder to actually make, yeah, to find the assets you want. So uh, so then it then you come in and do your stuff by yourself basically. But um, it's a really good start. Yeah, it's it's. Uh, it's probably like you get like, I don't know, 40% you can start working with. And even though if you replace your assets later on, you can already put stuff in and see, okay, this works actually. We should go with that. And then you can do your props or your assets probably later on. I think so. That means uh, that now maybe two or three people really can make an awesome game because there are so many tools they can use. So we can all be excited what, what uh, will come out there in the next years, I think. And, and I still think you saw, I mean, everybody saw that at E3, the blockbusters really blow people away and you see why you need so many people doing them. But at the same time, having other cool, cool stuff that, that people can just do, it's very exciting, I think. I mean, it's the same for us. We're like a little bit in between right now, but we can really use a lot that's there and do our own stuff it's 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 cool so so that's that's one point in time where it's nice doing games no i think it's always nice but it's really interesting right now so 
thank you so much, uh, you two, uh, for <laughs> telling so much about uh, about the games. And um, yeah, that was our um, special game slash 3D environment, sitting on the beach and not ordering any drinks yet episode. So now maybe we order some drinks. Oh, you ordered your drink, but uh, where is it? Is it? It's over there. So, so then. Uh, <laughs> Cheers guys! <laughs> <And> cheers. <laughs>